And yeah, thank you so much for being here this morning. We are really excited to hear what you have to say. And I'm, um, I'm going to let you get started. So I'm on the first slide. Okay. Okay. Um, my name's Tom Roberts. I'm a pest control advisor. And um, for lack of a better description, they, a lot of people just call me the bug guy. Um, I, have, I started out with uh, no agricultural background. I did not grow up on a farm. I grew up in the suburbs and on military bases. So um, I learned uh, everything through, through uh, experience and education. Um, next slide. Sure. My, it's my 40th season as an independent licensed pest control advisor. What independent means is that I, I do not um, get a commission or a reward for selling chemicals. It's strictly on my advice and my inspections. So I have no conflict of interest. I, I consult on many crops, <coughs> crops. Um, uh, majority of my inspections are avocados and citrus, some coffee, some wine grapes and uh, uh, agave. I've been an owner in my company uh, since I started in 1995. I'm a partner in another inspection service with a, um, another pest control advisor who handles uh, Riverside, San Diego, and Orange County. And I have three license categories, a pest control advisor for my advice, a qualified applicator for applying chemicals, but it also is a license I need to release Beneficial insects, uh, by law, I have to have a license to release good bugs. And then I'm a certified crop advisor. I advise on nutritional fertilizer requirements for crops. Next slide. I want to just let you know, the other day we had um, someone from Rincom Vitova talk to the students yes. about beneficial insects. We had um, Kyra with us. Okay, good. So, then you're, so, so they, they learned a little bit about beneficials the other day. <laughs> All right, and I, and so what I do is I I basically go I go into an orchard that I'm uh, paid to look at, and I I look at it uh, frequently, regularly for uh, potential problems. I try to prevent problems from happening. And sometimes we can prevent those problems by releasing beneficial insects or by controlling another insect that's causing a problem with a, a pest. And, and the one that causes most of our problems is an ant, uh, the Argentine ant. That's the little black ant that probably everybody's familiar with yeah. in their house. They, they are invasive. Uh, the nice thing is they don't have a stinger, so they, they uh, aren't uh, uh, dangerous to humans, but uh, they can upset uh, the balance of nature in, in uh, citrus and avocado orchards. So we, we use a, a technique um, called Integrated Pest Management, IPM, and that's the definition there. It's, it's somewhat long, but it, it's an ecosystem-based strategy that focuses on long-term prevention of pests or their damage through a combination of techniques. And we, we, in my company, we stress biological control first. That's the, the use of beneficials or, or non-pesticide uh, type controls. Uh, uh, through habitat manipulation, sometimes you can you can uh, uh, plant cover crops that uh, prevent some pests from happening. You can use cultural practices, which um, uh, an example would be disking of weeds instead of spraying them with uh, uh, herbicides, weed weed killers, and then uh, resistant plants that are resistant to some of the diseases that we're uh, experiencing. So what Argentina ant does is it farms some insects that create a real sticky material that's high in sugars, and they use that as a food for their nest. So they protect these, um, what they call soft scales, and uh, they chase away all the beneficials. And that's the problem. If the ants weren't there, the beneficials would move in and clean it up, and we wouldn't have to use uh, pesticides. But these ants, they just don't quit. That's, that's what they do all day and even in the night. Next slide. Okay. So for an example, in, in lemons, we have a pest called California red scale. And the major beneficial that controls red scale is called Aphytus malinus. It's a wasp, a stingless wasp that attacks this um, round reddish co covering here. That's what the red scale looks like. So if, if we have ants interfering with the wasp activity, we don't get control of the red scale and it causes a, a, 
um, it can kill trees eventually, but it usually gets on the fruit and makes it unmarketable. The, the grower can't sell it. Mm -hmm. So, um, but if, by keeping the ants down, we can use less pesticides, mm -hmm. and we have to monitor frequently to see what's what's happening. So uh, there's established guidelines, and um, so you have um, guidelines that um, you go by in the orchard. Some growers adjust those guidelines. For instance, we have a a scale level of uh, five percent of the fruit with scale on it is is a borderline um, a danger treatment level. So that's our goal is to to be less than five percent uh, of the fruit with red scale. Next slide. Okay. And then um, we use uh, chemical um, treatments, pesticides as a last resort. If the, the beneficials aren't working or the cultural controls aren't working, then we, we try to select a material that is applied in a manner that minimizes the risk to uh, human health, the beneficials that are out there, and, and other uh, non-target organisms, as, as well as the environment, the air and the water and the soil. So uh, uh, I've got a picture there of giant white fly, which was a big problem on hibiscus a few years ago, but it also has exit holes that um, show that it's slowly being controlled by a, a beneficial organism. And it's not obvious. You need a, a magnifier to see that. But um, this test is pretty much under control now. It was out of control at one point. Next so slide. So can I ask a question? So we're looking at like the blue leaves on the hibiscus. Is that like a web? Is that a web or what? It, it's, um, it, it's a cottony like mass. And it'll it'll be like an inch or an inch and a half long on the bottom side of the leaf. Uh -huh. um, it, it can look like a webbing, but it's it's a protective covering so that uh, they're not attacked by uh, beneficial insects like the lacewing. The lacewing would have trouble getting through that to lay an egg. Um, the little wasp that controls it can get through this. So yeah, it's it's a sign it's getting bad when you have this big cottony mass on the bottom side of the leaf. Yes, definitely. Okay, I'm on the next one. <clears throat> okay. So uh, this is just an example of, of the range of, of um, crops and venues that, that we consult on. I, we look at agave north of Goleta. I have a grower that, that uh, markets his own, um, uh, we can't call it tequila because that's a trademark, but it's similar to tequila. Mm -hmm. And then uh, also we also consult on wedding venues uh, in the Santa Rosa Valley, and so they they sometimes have uh, problems with their their grass, their turf, or their roses background there, and and so we consult with uh, them to keep it um, pretty so that the uh, wedding pictures turn out right. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Okay. This this is um, sort of how how I got to where I, I I ended up. I was not into science in high school. I think I took one biology course ever. And, uh, and that was in Hawaii. I went to high school in Hawaii and uh, also one year of university, but I was majoring in political science. I uh, didn't like school. I wasn't, I didn't know what I wanted to do and uh, ended up going to work. And then I decided I wanted to change to uh, forestry, specifically fisheries, and I uh, was going to transfer to Humboldt State in Northern California, but uh, found out that there weren't many jobs. And if you were lucky enough to get a job, you wouldn't get paid very much. So I I changed my major again and went to a different school, Cal Poly Pomona. Uh, after talking to the, the head of the department, uh, they pretty much guaranteed a, a job. And this was during a recession when, when they weren't, uh, there wasn't a lot of hiring going on, but agriculture had high demand for uh, uh, workers and uh, consultants. Um, I, I had a slight delay in my career. I had cancer in 1979. I've been uh, cancer-free uh, since then. So, um, and then I got my degree, and after seven years of school, three majors, and three colleges, I, I was the first in my family to, to uh, get a degree. So that's, in, in short, how I got to where I'm going. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, and, and then, so, yeah, I, I long story short. Um, so I, I did, I was not... Uh, uh, I, we didn't have a lot of money, so I paid. I paid my way through college, and and that was the other reason. I was, if I didn't have enough money, I got out and I went to work, or I worked. I worked as many as three jobs when I was in school. So, 
um, these are some of the jobs that I did. I did anything and everything that paid money. So from uh, cleaning toilets and at a, a hotel to gas station attendant to back when they had attendants to pump gas, um, working at a tuna factory, uh, security guard, I mean, just anything. So mm -hmm. uh, that picture on the right, if you can see in the, about the middle is um, the head of a badger. And I had never seen a badger in an orchard before and it scared the heck out of me. So. Oh, I do you, see it. Okay. It's in the tree. Yeah. At the oh, bottom there, at the bottom of the trees, the tree leaves. So badgers are one of the meanest animals um, I've ever seen. And this one did not um, attack me, but I didn't get that close to give them a chance. So <laughs> That's sometimes you know what you're going to see. Uh, <laughs> next slide. Okay. Uh, again, another example of things you run into, that's a rattlesnake that was in the middle of the road. That's a big one. Uh, yeah. And, and so um, the company that I, I have a partner with uh, hires, uh, we have four uh, uh, um, pest control advisors and or scouts that work for us between San Diego and, and uh, San Luis Obispo counties. And so these are the things that we look for in an employee uh, when we're um, when we have a vacancy for a, a work or, or we pick up additional acreage where we need uh, additional help. So we, we need people that uh, know when to ask for help, uh, ask questions, um, that you can make yourself um, uh, so that the client depends on you. That's a good sign that, that you're doing good work, that you can work independently on your own with little supervision. We, we are out wandering orchards and uh, you know, just knowing what to do in, in case you have a like a flat tire or you you run into a rattlesnake. Each each ranch has their own. Um, sometimes they'll they'll come out and help you, or they'll tell you, uh, you know, stay away from the rattlesnake. We'll go kill it for you. That kind of thing, or we'll we'll go move it. Um, you need to manage your time efficiently. I usually give uh, workers a list of uh, blocks or ranches to go inspect, and I give them guidelines. But um, I, I have a good idea of how long it should take them. It, it, it's slower at first because you're not as familiar with, with the uh, insects or the growers or the ranches. And so it takes time. And that's, that's an investment on our part as a company. We, we try to groom uh, people to, to uh, work in an in a efficient manner, a safe manner. And, and over time, they get uh, good at what they do. And we make them, we reward them accordingly. So uh, we also like people that contribute ideas, trying to improve our company. Uh, we're not um, we're not very computer efficient. I have employees that are way smarter than I am. I I, I can I learn from them. So it, um, it's a two way street. And and uh, it, most importantly, you never stop learning. For Forty years, I I always learn something new uh, out in the field or from somebody that I meet. Next slide. Okay. So why, why do you need to know all this? Um, um, classes that you would take, uh, you need to know about water, soil, insects, and that's where biology and chemistry comes in. Um, you need to communicate with ag workers sometimes in Spanish. My Spanish is very uh, limited. It usually gets me in trouble um, more than helps me. So I, I do have um, a, a Spanish fluent employee. Uh, if I can't understand or I'm not able to communicate my ideas, I can uh, have my one employee translate for me. Um, we need uh, workers that can write uh, in intelligently on inspections, try, you know, reduce uh, spelling errors and, and uh, try to uh, convey the idea they're trying to get across to the grower that, you know, one, you have a problem or two, everything's okay, or uh, we need to come back in a week and look at it again. Sometimes we have to calibrate equipment uh, to make sure that whatever we recommend is applied uh, properly. You don't want to have uh, too much fertilizer go on that costs the grower money or it could kill the trees. Um, uh, this picture on the right is, uh, I have a question, is this a pesticide residue on all? At first glance, you, you think that that reddish material is, is a pesticide, but in reality, that's the... Um, Pause check from a, a fire from a, a helicopter drop, and so we we are always wondering. You know, this would be a question: what what the heck is that? What happened? Was uh, that so from Santa Paula? Uh, that the this was 
up in Goleta at the time, but yeah, you see it uh, everywhere where they're trying to protect uh, houses and crops, mm-hmm. and it it does wash off, and that was our main concern is that it, it doesn't uh, get on the fruit and, and mm-hmm. uh, cause a blemish. Next slide. Okay. So basic courses that I took in, in college were, were uh, biology, chemistry. Uh, you, you usually need to take a, a foreign language, and this is where I I, I made a mistake. I took German. I, I took seven years of German. I, I have yet to meet uh, anybody in the ag world that speaks German, so um, I should have taken Spanish. Uh, you need uh, some math, uh, microbiology, and organic chemistry. Um, an example on the, the picture there is uh, an example of integrated pest management. Instead of throwing snail bait to control snails, uh, you can paint the uh, tree trunks on citrus with a copper solution with, that prevents the snails from ca- crawling up the trunk. And so we save it for money. And as long as you keep the, the uh, bottom part of the tree, the leaves off the ground so that the snails can't uh, sneak around it. Uh, but this has been very effective. And uh, you can see the snails collecting at the bottom there. Next slide. Okay. Uh, other questions? I'm sorry. I always said that's interesting, and I'm on I'm on your next slide. Okay. Um, other basic courses: uh, physics. Uh, you had to take an additional science. I think that's why I took that. <clears throat> uh, report writing, being able to write um, short reports is important. So so being able to uh, again um, uh, give out information and and uh, in a timely fashion. Statistics I had to take, that was probably my least favorite class. Uh, trigonometry, another advanced um, math course. But one of the more important classes I ever took was, was typing, which would now be called word processing. And that was way back in 1969, I think. But um, my dad made me take that course, and I didn't like it. Um, over time, I got good at it and, and was glad I did. But sometimes you don't know. Uh, what you need, and it's helpful to have other people guide you. Um, there's a picture of a honeybee swarm there. That was about as close as I wanted to get to that. Um, that happens in the spring, um, and, and that can be a safety problem sometimes in the orchards. If the pickers are are out there, they may not pick a tree because the, the bees are you know uh, bothering them. So we we have to take um, either. Um, a, a, treatment measures, but we also, uh, one of my employees is a beekeeper, so uh, a lot of times they just move on, uh, the bees will move off on their own, and uh, they usually don't sting when they're swarming. Mm. Next, next slide. Okay. So then, then there was my major courses, the ones that were directly rela- related to uh, agriculture, and that, that's when your major gets interesting. You get the basics out of the way, and the um, I wouldn't say they're boring, but that they're not applicable to what you're wanting to do in, in agriculture. You, they're your, your basis, your foundation, uh, but then you get into specifics. And some of the courses I took were agricultural law, uh, uh, bee science. We had to maintain uh, beehives for a, a quarter in college. That was, that was really fun. And you, you get over your fear of bees if you have it. Um, uh, introduction to arthropods, pest management, pest control practices. Um, so I, a lot of times I go out in the field, that picture on the right, uh, uh, this uh, grapevine had these weird shaped leaves and they weren't coming out normally. And uh, so the, the property next door, I found out, had applied a, uh, a weed killer. And uh, this orchard happens to be downwind from that application. So there was uh, a problem with the herbicide drifting onto the grapes. And, and this is a concern as a pest control advisor. We have to be aware of, of what is next door to the, the property if we are writing recommendations and grower is spraying that we we keep him out of trouble. You know, you don't you don't want to drift onto something else. It it can lead to um, legal problems and and settlements that cost you money. Uh, next slide. Okay. Other major courses: plant pathology, soil sciences. Plant ID, one of my funnest courses was plant ID. We used to walk around all day on campus and the grower would, I'm sorry, the uh, instructor would point out plants and we'd have to, he'd 
give us the name and the scientific name and the family name and two pests. And we'd have three by five cards and we'd all take out our clippers and clip a piece of the, the plant and put it on a, a five by eight uh, card and keep these little shoe boxes and carry it around with us like flashcards. And, and we were always testing each other, but it was fun. And you get out of the classroom. <clears throat> Uh, plant physiology, uh, we had to take a tractors class. I learned how to drive tractors. Um, uh, weed control practices. The the picture on the right was a, a grower had an oak tree that was dying and he said, you know, what what is this? What What's the problem? And I, I had to call a, uh, a UC, uh, University of California researcher at Riverside to come out and look at this. He was a disease expert. And uh, he identified it, and we we got the uh, problem solved. So so sometimes you have I didn't know what it was. You have to go to to um, somebody that specializes in a disease or a pest, and um, either through the university or the the farm advisor's office in uh, Ventura or the ag commissioner's office. They have people sometimes that can help you. So it, it it's never a a one person job. It's sometimes a, a group of people that um, find solutions. Next slide. Okay. Uh, and then you get into more advanced courses. You, you start taking uh, uh, biological control, which was just collecting um, uh, beneficial insects that uh, fight uh, bad uh, insects. And you, you have collections. I think we had to have, I think, five or six or seven insect collections that were very specific. Uh, some of my production courses, crop production courses I took were citrus and grapes, which helped me uh, when I did graduate. Um, the example on the, the picture on the right is a tree that was dying in uh, Florida in a, a state park. And there's a beetle that uh, is doing this and it kills a specific uh, family of trees, but uh, laurel trees are related to avocado trees. And so uh, this beetle, if it gets to California, would uh, potentially kill a lot of avocado trees. So we have we have uh, preventative measures that we take. Uh, I go to Florida to see what what problems they have with their avocados and citrus. And then uh, we have um, the Ag Commissioner's office and we have state inspectors. If you're ever traveling, if you drive into California or fly into California at the airports, they have dogs that sniff for um, agricultural products, uh, not not just drugs, but but uh, fruit that uh, hasn't been inspected that may have a pest on it. So the easiest way to keep something bad from happening in, in our agricultural crops is to prevent the introduction of it. So uh, people try to smuggle in fruit and, uh, as well as, you know, everything else. And so uh, prevention's uh, a lot cheaper. Next slide. Okay. Uh, and I, there's a lot of courses. I, I, a lot of these are uh, very specific. You can get into other avenues of agriculture. You can go to the markets and uh, be an inspector for the, the state or the county. And so produce market quality would be a course you would take. And you, you basically uh, learn all the potential problems with fruit. Uh, the goal is to have fruit arrive at the market that isn't rotting, that doesn't have a disease on it, that, that, that when you buy it, it's going to have a certain quality. So, so the uh, this course would help you. Uh, uh, vertebrate pest management, if you get into, um, uh, say you want to start your company and you want to do gopher and rat and squirrel control, that's that's a course that would be very helpful. Um, the picture on the right is a, a Goleta damaged avocado orchard. Uh, I think that was about three or four years ago. They all kind of look the same after a while, the, the damage. So I, I go in and evaluate the trees and, and try to decide which trees need to be cut down and replaced or which trees can be pruned and uh, nursed along back to health uh, and try to give them a damage rating so that they know how much money to set aside to buy new trees from the nursery um, for next year or the following year. And, and so we, we try to give them an idea of what it's going to cost them. Next slide. Okay. Some of the work-related training uh, um, uh, that I, I encountered, I, I worked for a pest control company that did uh, gopher control and uh, rat control around the dorms where the students uh, stayed. Um, and so uh, that's an example of rat damage in the citrus tree on the right. And I did gopher control for the city of Walnut in alleyways behind houses. Um, and so I, I learned a lot about rats and, and gophers. Next slide. 
I worked for a chemical company in uh, Yuma, Arizona on cotton. Uh, I learned that I, I did not like uh, working in 115 degree heat and I did not enjoy working in cotton that was six feet high. And, and uh, uh, so I, I, I was able to make a decision. I learned I, I would rather work in citrus or grapes in California. Next slide. And I, I worked with the university for a summer on uh, pheromone trials. Pheromones are a, a uh, artificial chemical that is uh, that, that um, mimics the the uh, uh, attractant for a female insect that attracts the male for a mating purposes. So this trap here has the the um, pheromone in the top of the trap, and it collects only the males of this particular moth called the uh, omnivorous looper. And so when you get a lot of moths in this trap, it tells you that the, the males are mating with the females, which means they're gonna be laying eggs soon, which means uh, there's a, a wasp that you can release that uh, Rincon Vitova uh, uh, raises and sells, and uh, that wasp will uh, sting or attack the eggs. They lay an egg in the egg of the looper, the moth, uh, egg stage and it hatches out more wasps so you can control your your uh, worm pest with another insect and you don't have to spray so that's why we use those traps um, there's not always a solution like that but if there is a solution we take advantage of it and save the grower money and pest control costs um, next slide Oops. so i also i worked in a i'm sorry Oh, okay. Okay, I um, I worked in a, a uh, an insectary rear, rearing beneficial insects like Aphidus malinus and, and killer snails, the cone-shaped snails on the right, and uh, learned learned a lot about the insects. Uh, I I you in in summary, the the Aphidus malinus wasp is reared on a scale insect called oleander scale, which is grown on banana squash, which we buy from squash growers down in the desert or Lompoc or Ventura County, whoever's growing it at the time. And so we have a, a culture where we're, we're um, um, watching the squash, making sure it's the right stage um, size for the scale to grow scale on so that we can introduce wasps that'll lay eggs so that we can harvest what hatches out from that. And then we collect the, the new wasps and package them and sell them. Um, the, the insectary I worked at was down in Corona, California. So this, this is another, uh, another insectary foothill ag research. Next slide. I went, I went to work for a, a, uh, an inspection service. That's where I got my experience. And so I worked for them for 14 years before um, uh, eventually becoming a partner and a partner in the insectary. And so we we would go out and and do inspections and, and I learned from my my mentor who was uh, very well respected and, and knowledgeable. Um, the picture on the right shows a a predatory mite, which is a looks like a little spider, and all it does all day is run around uh, looking for stuff to eat, and it eats the this bad insect that's called a a citrus strips, which causes a scar on, on uh, fruit. So we, we are always monitoring this, and uh, if you have a lot of predaceous mites, you don't have to treat for the, the uh, insects that the thrips. Next slide. <clears throat> the picture on the right is an art, a piece of art up in Morgan Hill. It was a, that spider is about eight feet across and six feet long. And they light it up at night, and it was above the entrance to a parking garage, and I, I had to get a picture of it. So. Um, uh, what do I do? I, I mentioned I inspect crops and monitor for pests. We release beneficial organisms. Um, we write recommendations if needed for uh, treatment. Uh, if the beneficials don't work or, or it looks like the pest is getting out of control to prevent damage to, to the, the crop or the trees or the plants. We respond to clients' questions, concerns, requests. I mentioned being indispensable to the client. You, you know, if you're close with the client, I've got clients that are friends over years that, you know, they just, they depend on you. And it's, it's uh, a good thing that they're calling you for help instead of calling somebody else from a business standpoint. 
um, uh, it's important that you understand what pest management means. It's it's management, not elimination. So uh, that's a real spider on the right that caught a honeybee in its nest, and it's wrapped it up in its silk for uh, future meals. Um, so we we check traps. We maintain those traps. You have to make sure they're they're uh, not filled with water or that um, another animal is using it for a home. Um, we collect leaf soil water samples for growers. Uh, we research new pests, which seem to be every year there's something new uh, to worry about. Uh, we research potential new crops for clients. I mentioned agave. That um, We didn't know agave would grow in uh, California, to be honest with you, it, it, uh, and on the coast too, within, within, side of, within side of the ocean. Uh, so that was an interesting uh, trial. And we, we assist with uh, university uh, research and uh, chemical trials sometimes with if new chemicals come out, uh, new techniques, things like that. So we, we learn from them and, and uh, share ideas. Next slide. Uh, we, uh, I mentioned it, the chemical trials. We release pollen to increase fruit set in avocados. Uh, we service our trucks. We keep our trucks clean. We work long hours. This, this is the more um, mundane uh, type stuff. Uh, that's another beneficial on the right. It's called a twice stab beetle. It's got a very easy to remember name because it looks like it's been stabbed twice. Uh, it eats um, uh, scale insects on wood. So if you have these out there, it's a good sign. Next slide. And so the company. Um, that we hire employees for. Um, this is this is what we provide for them. It's a, a, a salary depending on um, their level of expertise. A lot of them are, are have no experience, like I I had no experience, and so you start out at the bottom. If you you have more experience, you get more money. Uh, you get a work vehicle, two weeks paid vacation. We pay for two um, memberships in professional organizations. Uh, CAPCA is a, the association for our pest control uh, advisors. Uh, AAIE is a, a uh, beneficial uh, organism uh, company, uh, or a uh, not a company, but a, an organization. So it's a group of of, uh, of IPM practitioners that stress uh, using beneficial insects instead of chemicals. Uh, we pay for their uh, we pay for the employees' licenses. Um, and uh, if they don't have a magnifier, uh, this is the magnifier that we recommend they get. It's a uh, 14 power hand lens that you carry around your neck and you can see just about everything out there. And uh, uh, we provide medical insurance. The insect on the right is a, a, a pest that has only shown up about three times ever in 40 years, but when it shows up, it, it feeds on the stems of avocados and causes the fruit to drop off. And that's a bad thing. So you can see the stem is about to fall off there or, or split and the fruit will drop to the ground and, and we're not allowed to pick up fruit off the ground. So that's, that's lost money to the grower. So we, we, um, the solution to this was to pick the fruit as fast as possible. That, there was, it wasn't uh, a good idea to spray for this bug um, because it migrates. You'd spray one day and then you'd have more bugs come in the next day. So we learned that wasn't a smart thing to do. There's no beneficials for this pest that were available. So the, the smartest thing was just to pick the fruit as fast as possible. Next slide. Uh, we are looking for employees that are honest, that work in a safe manner, that have a good driving record, they show up on time, good communication skills, they keep accurate and neat records, and they're professional. And so this is. This is stuff that you should have before you get hired. You know, you uh, people talk about character, and we're you know you you talk to other employees and employers, and you get a feel for somebody if you're about to hire them uh, as to what kind of an employee you're hiring. So your your previous employment always has uh, bearing on whether or not you get hired uh, in your next job. So. Um, uh, there's a saying, uh, "Don't burn any bridges," and that's that's what that means. You, you, uh, no matter what job you're doing, do it to the best of your ability, and and always leave under good terms, so you you can get a good um, uh, reference and recommendation next time. Uh, the picture on the right is an example of a, a vine 
a weed vine called morning glory or filled bind weed that climbs up the emitters and eventually stops the uh, emitter from turning and, and putting out water. So um, you can culturally, you can hoe that out, you could weed it out, pull it out, but it, it comes right back. A lot of growers spray for it. Um, you could also apply a woody mulch to keep that vine from growing as rapidly. Uh, there's an organic material, acetic acid, that can also control it. Um, what else can you do? There's beneficials, but we can't import the beneficial. It's in Colorado, and I found out that I'm not, I'm not allowed to buy this particular organism to release on uh, field binding with morning glory. It's not allowed in California. It's frustrating. Sometimes you have a solution, and you can't use it. Next slide. Uh, some of our equipment. Cell phones, computers, copier scanners, you get a truck, soil probe, shovel. Uh, we use uh, backpack blowers to release pollen and beneficial mites sometimes. And occasionally we need all-terrain vehicles to get in the hilly areas. But then we have um, safety issues. There's increased liability uh, on hillsides with ATVs. I, I've fallen off of them once and it's... It, um, I didn't get hurt, but it, it uh, reinforces you got to be real safe helmets and that kind of stuff. Uh, colleges that have pathways and courses for the PCA. Um, if you wanted to be a PCA, a pest control advisor, we have six colleges now in California that, that have programs that lead to the, um, the uh, ability to get uh, your license. So um, there's the two Cal Polys. Uh, Cal State Channel Islands is, is the newest to this group, and, and they are um, starting up a program. It's, it's in its uh, beginnings. They don't have all the courses, but that's the goal, is so that you don't have to travel to, to uh, Fresno or Pomona or San Luis to get your, your courses, so it would save you some time and money. Um, Davis, Cal Davis is uh, a university level, so that's where you would go if you wanted to do uh, uh, research, if you wanted to go into uh, chemical research, pesticide research, or, or university research. Um, Cryptolemus kills uh, mealybug. And the, the adult Cryptolemus is the round thing there. And the big white thing with the arms is the immature stage of that beetle. So it almost looks like a bad guy, but it's a good guy. Next slide. So, uh, my inspirational story, I, I don't know if anybody knows who Billy Mills is, but he was um, uh, born and raised on an Indian reservation. His father was Oglala Lakota. His mother was non-Indian. So on the Indian reservation, he was discriminated against, even though he was half uh, Oglala. Uh, he was orphaned. Both his parents were dead by the time he was 12 years old. And he attended the, the uh, boarding school, boarding high school for Indians, which is now actually a college. It's, uh, when he was there, it only went as high as high school. Now it goes as high as university level courses. Uh, and he transferred and went to the University of Kansas. He was a runner and got his uh, physical education degree. So um, that in itself is an accomplishment, but um, he's more well known. Next slide. He joined the Marine Corps after he got his degree, and the Marine Corps allowed him to train for the Olympics. And he, was, he became the first American to ever win the 10,000 meter run in the, in the Olympics. He set his personal best time in the Olympics. He set the Olympic record time in the Olympics, and he won the gold medal in 1964. And if you Google that race, it's an amazing race because he comes from behind to do it. And he beat uh, the two runners there in that picture, were the two best runners in the world, and he beat both of them. So it, it shows you what you can do if you set your mind to it. Next slide. So what, what careers are in high demand right now from an ag standpoint? And, and these are some of the, the titles of the jobs, the drone technologist. Um, as somebody that has uh, uh, skill in, in flying a drone, and what they do is they survey um, uh, vineyards, orchards, and try to map out where the weak areas are in, the, in our orchards. Uh, they want uniformity. 
They want to find out where, where there's bad vines or weak vines or vines that need to be pulled out. It's easier and cheaper to use a drone now than to fly a helicopter or a, a uh, uh, airplane over. So that's, that's one job that um, is in demand right now. Uh, a hydrologist that's uh, basically studying uh, uh, water usage. So uh, that can get into a number of jobs. Agricultural communicators, those are just uh, liaisons. We have liaisons in the county that, that uh, work um, with um, uh, growers, farmers, and help them with uh, certain issues, uh, with new pests, uh, uh, getting information to them as to uh, the best approaches to, to fight pests or to grow crops. Food scientists, that, that um, covers all kinds of avenues. Uh, growing new crops, growing resistant crops, um, new strains of crops. We we used to have only one color of uh, of uh, uh, cauliflower, and cauliflower now comes in all kinds of colors. Um, uh, leafy greens, same thing. They have different colors of leafy greens now. Just it makes a salad real pretty, and and uh, people want to try it. Um, pest control advisors. That's that's what I do. Next slide. So these are some of the salaries. If you so so desire, uh, it gives you an idea. This is uh, 2019 salaries, um, starting salaries. So pest control advisor is at the low end of this list, but um, you can, uh, if you work for a chemical company and you're getting commissions on sales of chemicals, you could probably easily make $100,000 a year up to uh, $150,000 or $200,000 a year. Uh, it depends on how hard you want to work and, and uh, the products you're selling and who your who your clients are. So that gives you an idea of, of uh, uh, what money you could make. Next slide. So what are the dislikes of the job? I, I do a lot of driving. Um, I work outdoors. I like working outdoors, but there's heat, dust, cold, mud, ash, chicken manure, ticks, foxtails, and rattlesnakes. Those are some of my dislikes. Um, long hours in the field. We work longer hours in the summer. We don't work quite as long in the winter for obvious reasons. When it's raining, there's not a whole lot we can do. Um, long hours in the evening. You, you've got sometimes phone calls. You've got reading, emails, uh, and paperwork. Um, fire. Uh, trees and houses are destroyed. The picture on the right is my employee's uh, house that was burned down in the Thomas fire. She was up in Wheat Canyon. And basically got out with her dogs and her horses. She lost everything. Um, stress. You have stress from worrying about other things. Pests, weather, crop prices. And, and now we worry about coronavirus. So I've, I've had to deal with that too. Uh, next slide. Last slide. So what I like about it, I get to work outside. The scenery is beautiful. Each day is different. I meet lots of people. I can wear whatever I want. I, I wear shorts a lot. Uh, I don't have a uniform. I'm independent. I don't. I don't have a boss, but I, I you know, my growers are my boss. If, if you don't um, get answers or results for your growers, you won't be working for them very, very long. So I, I do have somebody I have to answer to. I get to manage my own time, um, and I like what I do. I always have. So I've been doing it for 40 years. That's that. Very, very good. Very interesting. I have, I have so many questions. Um, I'm going to see, let's go and see students. Do you guys have questions? You're up. I'll start us off. Um, so how many different at any time, at any given time, like how many different farms are you consulting for? Or do you work for? Um, I have uh, over 60 clients. 60. And yeah, I, well, I have I have I have four employees and I have a, an employee who's going to become a partner. Um, I'm in the transitional phase right now where he he's been working for me for uh, 10 years and he knows uh, all the clients. He's very familiar with what we do. He's I could if I die tomorrow, he could take over the company. It's wow. just Legally and you know physically getting the the mechanism and gear, it's, you got to work with lawyers and and your accountant. And uh, so I, I have 60 clients. 
And uh, each one of those clients, some are small, um, like uh, as small as an acre, uh, uh, and as large as over a thousand acres with multiple ranches in multiple counties. Um, so it, it um, with multiple crops. Uh, some growers that we work for have have 10, 11, 12 crops. We one of our clients is uh, Ipricot Lane Farms that oh, did cool. the uh, they did the movie um, right. Yeah, biggest I little took, farm. Yeah, I took students on a field trip there. It's that's really cool. That's one of your clients. Wow, it's yeah. probably I call it like the Disneyland of farms because it's just like a magical, <clears throat> beautiful yeah, it's place. Got, it's got everything. I mean, they yeah. there's hardly anything they don't grow there and we yeah. we consult only on the tree crop um okay. uh, so we've been there i think it's been five or six years oh, okay uh, but but we learn too and it, it's um it's a, a an outdoor laboratory and so it's they have great people that work there and and the film was certainly um excellent it was well done and, and so uh, we enjoy working there we were there every wednesday afternoon so yeah, that's uh, and, quite an orchard. It's so beautiful. And yeah, you're lucky you got the tour because they they haven't been able to give tours yet again. I know. Since the <laughs> I'm really outbreak. persistent. I know. I would love to take ev all the students out there. Um, I keep trying. Um, I'll make you. I'll, I'm going to make you guys watch the video. Um, Marco wants to know: Do you get to keep the work truck if you work there long enough? And have you ever been injured while on the job? Um, we rotate our trucks out. We, we can't afford to have them break down. So if uh, an employee wanted to purchase the truck, we would sell it to them at a, a, a good price. Um, we don't give them away, but um, <laughs> we, we have trucks that we put a lot of miles on the trucks. And so uh, 30,000 miles right. is a normal year. And, and so we, we buy um, a basic pickup truck, you know, it's got air conditioning, et cetera. But because we, we get them beat up, you know, we get scratches from thorns and, and flat tires and, and um, just wear and tear, sunlight, yeah. um, breaking down the paint. So um, that that's uh, that's what we do. And then uh, the other question was, uh, have, you ever have I ever been? Uh, just, just minor stuff. You know, you slip on a, a, a hillside and and on your your backside and uh, uh can't say I, i've had we've had we've had one close call where a a straddle fork uh, which is a, an orchard um an orchard forklift for the bend it came out of an orchard one time and, and speared the the uh, driver's side door on a truck and nobody got hurt but um that's when you you know you don't want to be driving around with the windows up and the radio on so you don't hear the equipment coming and you're certainly going to you need to look before you drive by so you need to know you see bins you see workers cars you see a dust cloud you know there might be a straddle fork coming so um no nobody's um never been bitten by a rattlesnake and never had a, a work-related accident um but, i mean it's, it's always possible but uh, safety first we we just try to be aware of our surroundings I um my family are citrus growers so they um were really concerned about the Asian citrus psyllid which um kind of decimated the orange crops in Florida. Is yeah. that something and I know people are watching it really closely here in California. Are you do you have a lot of experience with with that one? Yes, I do and I it's funny I did not mention that at all or show a picture of it. Um uh, yes, I've been to Florida three times. I've been down to LA uh, several times. Uh, I've seen the diseased trees, dead trees, seen the psyllids, seen the beneficials that control the psyllids, and we're constantly, uh, daily, probably dealing with some aspect of that, either talking to somebody or researching something, or um, I, I release uh, uh, the beneficials for it at uh, uh, Apricot Lane Farms. It's it's a a small wasp called uh, Tamarixia radiata. Uh, it's it's um, if you don't have ants, if you don't have Argentine ants, it can be uh, uh, ninety percent effective, up to ninety percent effective. So um, it, it depends on the situation. But yeah, I'm I'm very involved with it. Been been with it since uh, day one. I didn't know there were beneficials for the for that. So that's good. That's good to know. 
they're expensive. They're about a dollar a piece. <laughs> that's that is expensive. Oh, that's the other question. So I was going to tell the students. Um, so I have all of my cousins and aunts and uncles and everything. Um, anyway, one of one of my aunts, she used to actually, she was growing or um, I don't know the right word, but the decolates, the snails. Um, yeah, the killer snails. Yep. Yeah, so she was actually just kind of like re growing them. <laughs> I'm forgetting. Yeah, you, you created you created a nursery in your orchard, and then you collected them and released them. Yep. Yeah, and then she would sell them because um, they are very expensive as well, or they used to be very expensive. So um, it was yeah, like a side job. She made a lot. Yeah, of money. they're like they can be five cents to ten cents a piece. Mm -hmm. uh, just depending on who you who you get them from but yeah it's easier and cheaper to grow them yourself yeah but um that's cheaper than the the beneficial for a dollar a piece for a bug is is a lot because i imagine yeah. you would need for like 20 acres you would probably need how many of those bugs and that that is the problem with with insectary insectary businesses um a lot of insectaries grow what's easy to grow and uh, eats a lot of different things like green lace wings. They, they feed on a lot of bad bugs. Mm -hmm. uh, they can grow them and they're inexpensive to purchase. Mm -hmm. But uh, you want something that's more specific like a wasp that attacks just one pest because you can't control lace wings in the field. You don't know if they're going for Asian citrusillid. They may be eating mealybugs or mites. And so you, you have trouble uh, uh, maintaining or controlling the pest that you want to control so so the money is in getting a very specific beneficial but it costs a lot of money to start and it's a, it's the egg and the chicken thing you know you, you if you had more customers you could drop the price of your product and that's that's where the the beneficial is right now there's not a lot of people buying because the state um uh, and the packing houses are requiring that we treat uh, the citrus in order to pick it uh, we don't want to move the psyllid around anymore to prevent we want to prevent the spread of the disease. And so far we've had no commercial citrus in California with the disease. Oh, and uh, so it's, um, it's been going on for almost 10 years now in California and it'll go on for another 10 years. Um, John is asking what inspired you to do what you are doing now, which I think, so he did talk about that in the beginning, um, but you can kind of, you can share. Yeah, I, I like, I like the idea that uh, I could work outdoors and um, still be somewhat, um, I could stay in California. Mm -hmm. uh, I pretty much, I grew up here most of my my uh, uh, life. And so, you know, you got friends and, and family and stuff like that. And so there's there's agriculture in, in California. It's moving uh, out of the, the Southern California area, but uh, that was the main reason. There were job opportunities and uh, I could work outdoors and I, I got to do something that uh, I enjoyed. I, I enjoy uh, looking for things, looking for problems and trying to fix them. Yep, absolutely. Um, any other questions, students? We learned a lot. And this is so interesting to compare from what we learned from the insectary perspective, because she mentioned that they have someone on staff who like actually goes out to the farms and is actually doing your job. So it's really right. interesting now that we have kind of both perspectives to put together um, and to see how the work is connected. And really yeah, it's all, all connected, yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Um, I really enjoyed it. This was so interesting. Yeah, I, I thought it was really, really interesting. I, uh, they're good questions too. I appreciate the, the interest and um, feel free to contact me if they have further questions. And Okay, thank you. And thank you for joining us in this, you know, virtual interesting class that we're doing. Um, we really wish that in the future when we're all back in a classroom and, you know, we can all meet in person. Um, but thank you so much for being brave with us. <laughs> okay, I appreciate person. it. Thank, thank yeah, you for thank inviting me. Have a good day. Bye. Same to you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Hi students, um, do you guys have any questions for me? I'm gonna stop recording, let's see.